as we peer into the vast expanse of our solar system, Mars emerges as a celestial marvel, captivating astronomers and dreamers alike with its fiery allure. But amidst the swirling dust, storms, and rugged terrain lies a tale of cosmic upheaval, where the fate of moons hangs dangerously in the balance. What is the terrifying fate of Mars' moons? Join us as we unravel how Mars is destroying its moons. Mars has long fascinated astronomers and scientists due to its potential to support life, making it a focus of exploration for decades. Besides Earth, Mars is the only planet in our solar system that holds promise for sustaining life as we know it. Since 1971, when the Soviet Mars 3 space probe landed, humanity has been actively studying and preparing the planet for potential human habitation. Rovers like Viking 1, Curiosity, and Perseverance have been sent to Mars to investigate its past and present habitability by searching for signs of life through biosignatures. However, there's a looming threat on Mars that could disrupt these plans, the possibility of a moon colliding with the planet's surface. Despite this, humanity remains determined. Leading scientist Dr. Ken Farley, overseeing the Mars Perseverance rover mission, emphasizes the quest to discover life on Mars. To prepare for future human missions, the latest rover is equipped with various tools and technologies. Among them is a small helicopter with large air blades, designed to test the possibility of using drones to explore Mars, instead of relying solely on human exploration. Additionally, the rover carries a device capable of converting atmospheric carbon dioxide, CO2, into oxygen, O2. This innovation serves as a proof of concept for generating breathable air for future manned missions. If successful, this technology could eliminate the need for astronauts to carry oxygen for breathing or propulsion, potentially easing future Mars missions. Instead of bringing oxygen from Earth, astronauts could use a device like this to produce oxygen directly on Mars. This breakthrough would completely change the way we think about space travel. Following the Perseverance rover's landing in 2021, NASA uncovered exciting evidence supporting the possibility of life on Mars. They identified ancient volcanic rocks indicating past magma activity. Additionally, signs of previous water presence were discovered, including evidence of rivers, deltas, and lakes within the Jezero crater. Scientists are examining rocky material for microbial biosignatures, which are clues indicating the past presence of life. Dr. Foley compares this process to searching for dinosaur fossils in different layers of Earth's soil, albeit on a much smaller scale. Moreover, the rover has detected organic molecules preserved in Martian rocks and dust, stored in tubes for future collection. These scientific findings provide insights into Mars's environment billions of years ago, enhancing our understanding of the planet's history and potential for life. As NASA prepares for its first manned mission to Mars, potentially as soon as 2030 or even earlier according to Elon Musk's timeline, there's significant curiosity about the destiny of both the planet and its mysterious moon. While we envision exploring and even settling on Mars, can we afford to disregard the looming threat facing its moons, still entangled in deadly orbits with the planet? Phobos is the larger of the two moons orbiting Mars. Without a doubt, it steals the spotlight from its counterpart, Deimos. This intriguing moon has a lot to offer, making it a topic of endless fascination. Let's delve into the basics of Phobos, along with a critical aspect, its inevitable fate. Phobos made its grand entrance into our astronomical knowledge on August 18, 1877, thanks to the keen eye of astronomer Asaf Hall. Using a powerful telescope at the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., Hall searched the skies for signs of celestial bodies orbiting Mars. Despite initial setbacks, his perseverance paid off when he discovered not one but two moons, Phobos and Deimos, within a week. Inspired by his wife Angelina's encouragement and a suggestion from Henry George Madden, Phobos was named after the Greek god of fear and horror, the son of Mars and Venus in Greek mythology. However, Phobos's origins remain mysterious, much like its earthly counterpart, the moon. This potato-shaped moon boasts dimensions of 27 by 22 by 18, a relatively low mass, and a surface that reflects light, giving it the appearance of a typical asteroid. Yet, its true origins remain a subject of debate among astronomers. As we embark on our journey into the depths of space, Phobos stands as proof of both the wonders and the mysteries of our universe. Phobos bears such a striking resemblance to an asteroid that there isn't even a photograph of it. Instead, you're seeing a picture of Vesta, an asteroid. They look so similar that telling them apart is nearly impossible. 
thanks to a humorous quip from John Oliver, were prompted to ponder, since Phobos and Deimos resemble asteroids, could they simply be stray asteroids from the asteroid belt now caught in Mars's orbit? However, many aspects of these moons suggest otherwise. Typically, captured moons exhibit irregular orbits, ones that are highly elongated, inclined, distant, and often retrograde. However, Phobos and Deimos defy this trend with their nearly perfect circular orbits, aligned neatly with Mars' equator. Now, let's consider a scenario where these moons were once regular asteroids, captured by Mars and eventually settling into their current orbits over time. This would imply that Mars' atmosphere and axial rotation played a role in stabilizing their orbits. However, calculations reveal a problem. Mars' current atmosphere is too thin to provide sufficient drag to slow down Phobos and nudge it into its circular orbit. So, if Phobos isn't a captured asteroid, where did it come from? Another theory suggests that Phobos originated from Mars itself, similar to the giant impact hypothesis explaining the birth of Earth's moon. This theory proposes a scenario where a massive impact on Mars resulted in the formation of Phobos. Some astronomers propose that Phobos and Deimos formed from debris ejected into space after a colossal impact on Mars. Unlike the capture theory, this explanation is supported by substantial evidence. Mars is riddled with craters, some of which are large enough to be considered basins, the aftermath of massive impacts. Turning our attention to Phobos, thermal imaging reveals that this moon is predominantly composed of phyllosilicates, a type of mineral commonly found on the Martian surface. Additionally, Phobos exhibits high porosity, with about 30% of its structure consisting of voids and cavities akin to a sponge made of rock. In contrast, most asteroids in the asteroid belt are more solid than Phobos. If Phobos were indeed a captured asteroid, Mars's gravitational pull would likely have torn it apart as it stabilized its orbit. However, Phobos is on a collision course with its demise. Its orbit is shrinking by just under two centimeters every Earth year. While this may seem insignificant, over millions of years, these small reductions will accumulate, eventually leading to Phobos's destruction by Mars. At present, Phobos orbits at an average distance of 9,376 kilometers from the center of Mars, which is about 2.76 Martian radii. However, in 30 to 50 million years, as Phobos's orbit shrinks to 2.1 Martian radii, the gravitational pull of Mars will tear this tiny moon apart. So, what's causing Phobos's orbit to shrink? As Phobos orbits Mars, it exerts a gravitational pull on the Martian surface, causing a slight bulge known as a tidal bulge. This wouldn't be an issue if Phobos was in a synchronous orbit, where its orbital period matches Mars' axial rotation. However, Phobos orbits Mars three times in a single Martian day, causing the tidal bulge to constantly lag behind the Moon. These forces lead to a gradual decay in Phobos' orbit and a minor increase in Mars' rotation speed. Interestingly, the size of the tidal bulge caused by Phobos on the Martian surface is so minuscule that it's hardly noticeable, so there's no need to worry about a Phobos-induced hill tearing across Mars' surface three times a day. When Phobos's orbit decays to around 7,000 kilometers, it will reach the Roche limit, the point at which tidal forces become significant enough to tear the Moon apart. This phenomenon occurs because the gravitational pull on the nearest side of the Moon facing the planet becomes much stronger than on the far side. Given Phobos's small size and gravitational pull compared to Earth, it's particularly receptive to this effect. It doesn't require much force to surpass the Moon's Roche limit and tear it apart, similar to slicing through a loaf of bread. However, the future isn't entirely bleak for Phobos. Even after its destruction, remnants of Phobos are predicted to linger around Mars, forming a ring-like structure. This transformation would turn Mars into a sort of mini-Saturn, but without the gas. But like Phobos itself, this ring won't last forever. Eventually, after about 100 million years, the debris from the shattered moon will plummet back to Mars, raining down in a fiery hailstorm of meteorites this outcome seems quite fitting for a moon named after the personification of fear and horror. NASA has been aware of the impending doom of Phobos for quite some time now. However, the recent eclipse captured by NASA's Perseverance rover serves as a stark reminder of Phobos's inevitable fate. While this event may seem distant, the destiny of Phobos appears to be predetermined. On the other hand, Phobos's sibling, Deimos, faces a fate more similar to that of our own moon. Deimos is gradually drifting away from Mars and will eventually wander off into space. The motion of moons, whether it's Phobos around Mars or our moon around Earth, influences various aspects of our lives and our planet's dynamics. Our moon, which currently orbits about 477,213 miles away from Earth, 
is slowly distancing itself from us at a pace equivalent to the growth rate of our fingernails, about 1.5 inches per year. This gradual departure means that in roughly 600 million years, we'll witness our last solar eclipse caused by the moon's departure from Earth's orbit. The absence of the moon would have significant repercussions. Firstly, our night sky would become much darker without the moon's illumination, relying solely on stars for light during nighttime. Additionally, without the moon's gravitational influence, tidal motion on Earth would diminish significantly. The gravitational pull between the moon and Earth causes the oceans to bulge, resulting in tides rising and falling in a rhythmic pattern as the moon orbits Earth. As the moon moves farther away from Earth, our tidal patterns would be altered, leading to approximately one-third of the current tidal forces. This change would affect our calendar, with shorter days and a different number of days in a year. If, hypothetically, the moon were to approach Earth like Phobos is approaching Mars, it would trigger massive tidal surges, coastal flooding, tsunamis, and volcanic activity. Similar events are expected when Phobos eventually meets its demise near Mars. Although Mars lacks oceans, the geological impact of Phobos's descent will still be significant. The process of bringing a moon closer to a planet can cause upheaval, posing challenges for any civilization, whether on Earth or Mars. The collapse of Phobos may be inevitable, but we have a considerable amount of time, about 50 million years, to prepare for it. This gives us ample time to adapt, innovate, and perhaps even explore new homes beyond Mars if needed. Delving into the mysterious corners of our solar system fills us with anticipation for the future of space exploration. As we envision what lies ahead, we uncover challenges that the human race must confront. And surprisingly, they're not as distant as we once thought. Studying the moons of Mars reveals profound insights into how even the tiniest moons can significantly influence the dynamics of the entire planetary system. What are your thoughts on the inevitable fate of Mars's moons? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.